<laughs> you know, I have so learned to appreciate coffee. <laughs> I just, I never used to drink it, even when I was in the service, because occasionally you'd, you'd go over to the coffee pot and it was like, what is this? It's like syrupy, I mean, almost. I, ugh, so. But I've definitely developed a taste for it. Um, I'm going to sign, uh, sign this. I'm going to send this around. Um, sigil, sigil samples. So if you've ever wanted to doodle with purpose, um, kind of cool. Uh, there'll be a class here on September 21st on a Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. And uh, so just a little bit about it, a little bit, it's kind of interesting. So if that's of any interest to you, um, I've never heard of sigils before. But hey, if you can doodle with purpose, why not? Uh, new calendar, lots of stuff going on uh, in September. Things are ramping up a little bit from the summer. And of course, Labor Day is uh, coming up here fairly soon. And it's going to be a quiet week, but all the other, other stuff, of course, Shigong every Sunday. And t-shirts and sweatshirts that make a difference. Yeah, not really, but these are pretty good. Uh, retirement, the pay sucks, but the hours are great. <laughs> And people say I act like I don't care. Uh, it's not an act. <laughs> uh -oh. All right. And we do have a couple patron saints by the name of George Carlin and John Lennon. Yay, <laughs> and they could not be further from like people, can't, could they? So, uh, John said, uh, as breathing is my life, to stop, I dare not. <laughs> Deep. Deep. And George, equally as deep, uh, Beethoven was so hard of hearing he thought he was a painter. <laughs> I don't know. So. We do have our uh, picnic coming up September 22nd. Thank you. Very good. So uh, it'll be at, uh, you know, over the last 20 years or so that we've been doing a picnic every year, we've gone from different areas, but we've kind of settled in the last few years to Columbia Point just because it's so nice, right there at the river, beautiful surroundings, bathroom right there. I mean, it's great, it's just great, so. Things that make you go, hmm. It is with our passions, as it is with, with fire and water, they are good servants, but bad masters. At times, our strengths propel us far forward, so far forward that we can no longer endure our weaknesses and perish from them. Nietzsche. Um, and what the world needs is more geniuses with humility. There are just so few of us left. <laughs> <laughs> who said that? That was um, Oscar Levant. I don't know who it was. So. I have gone through this book page by page every Sunday since I don't remember. Um, but we are back to the very first page again. So, I mean, it's just there, it's got such good things in it, I think. Uh, the answer to the age-old question of which came first, the chicken or the egg, can be found in the Bible. Well, Genesis, I mean, you know, like, so. Whether you take it literal or not, so. There are certainly people that have both ways of thinking about that, so that's okay. Uh, speak, move, act in peace as if you were in prayer. In truth, this is prayer. Everybody's so quiet out there. Are you just listening or just uh, <laughs> don't have your first cup of coffee yet? Sheesh. All right. Um, this is, uh, the, this is outside of a second-hand shop. We exchange anything, bicycles, washing machines, etc. Why not bring your wife along and get a wonderful bargain? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet out of order. Please use bl floor below. <laughs> In a laundromat. Automatic washing machines. Please remove all your clothes when the light goes out. <laughs> Heaven forbid. In a London department store, bargain basement, upstairs. <laughs> In an office, would the person who took the step ladder yesterday please bring it back or further steps will be taken. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. And um, most lipstick contains fish scales. 
Yeah, that's exactly what it says here is ew. <laughs> Hi, Toby. She did. Yeah. Uh, Donald Duck comics were banned from Finland because he doesn't wear, wear pants. <laughs> Ketchup was sold in the 1830s as medicine. I know. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah, probably. Um, and, <laughs> okay, I've, I'm going to read this just because I think it's pretty silly. So this has nothing to do with, uh, with making fun of anybody. But it, if it does, then it does, I guess. I don't know. As a teacher, Mrs. <laughs> Jones was very curious about how each of her students celebrated Christmas. She called on young Patrick Murphy. Tell me, Patrick, what do you do at Christmas time, she asked. Patrick addressed the class as well, Mrs. Jones. Me and my 12 brothers and sisters go to midnight mass. We sing hymns. Then we come home very late. We put mincemeat pies at the back door and hang up our stockings. Get, then get all excited, go to bed, and wait for Father Christmas to come. Bring us toys. Very nice, Patrick, she said. Now, Jimmy Brown, what do you do for Christmas? Well, Mrs. Jones, me and my sister go to church with mom and dad. We sing carols. We get home ever so late. We put cookies and milk. Uh, by the chimney, and we hang up stockings. We hardly sleep, waiting for Santa Claus to come bring us presents. Realizing there was a Jewish boy in the class and not wanting to leave him out of the discussion, she asked, well, now, Isaac Cohen, what do you do for Christmas? Isaac said, well, it's the same thing every year. Dad comes home from the office. We all pile in the Rolls Royce. Then we drive to his toy factory. When we get inside, we look at the empty shelves and begin to sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> and, then we, and then we all go to the Bahamas. <laughs> I know, it's just silly, just silly. Oh, you know what? I got so tried, sidetracked this morning talking to everybody, I didn't pick a song. Okay. I didn't even turn the computer on. I got so busy. I It's a really good thing that we don't plan anything because then you can be more fluid, right? So I'm going to do, we've been practicing our um, sign language for our song. I'm going to do it differently today. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, no? <laughs> I'm a Virgo. I don't like change. <laughs> I'm a Virgo. I like change. Virgos are very changeable <clears throat> as long as it's my way. Um, <laughs> Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sign, and you say the word. All right? So there is a in my heart, a I do, it is you, good job, good. Oh, that wasn't part of our song. Um, it is, we are. To, <laughs> to, to live in the, in, life, in love, to, to <coughs> sing your song, sing your song, two great, remember the thread connecting us together, two great spirit. <coughs> The song living in our heart. In our. Don't be afraid. The this feeling. This feeling. This feeling. Is where it. Where it starts. Start your t a key in the ignition. This is where it starts. Okay. <laughs> Hearts.
Hold on, hold on. Oh. The healing, the healing power, power of love. Sparkling, sparkling, <laughs> sparkling light Bye. from above. <laughs> a sparkling light of the soul. Soul is this one, right? Soul. Soul. <laughs> Take a stand. This is soul. Right? Right? No. Or is this? Soul. She draws it up. Soul. Take a stand <coughs> for the future. Of this earth. Remember the earth rotating on its axis of this earth? We walk upon. Sh sharing. Remember, cut a piece of toast in half. You get some, I get some. Sharing. Remember, you're up. If you're, if you're up a creek without a paddle, you have no power. But if you have your paddle, you have power. Sharing power. Under, do the understanding one. It's like, do it again. Fling. Fling. Understanding. Light bulb comes on. Fling. We all are one. And then back to. There's a dream. Good job. Good job. Okay, so that was in reverse. That was harder. That was harder, but if you can hang on to the, the words and the thoughts and the motions together, it's really, really helpful. So now, Mr. Phil, has thou a song, my beloved, since I filled that space for you. You do pray for me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's just necessary. Um, if you want a copy of the song, There is a Dream, for signing, if you want to look up the words that we're going to use, there's a stack of green. You can't miss them on the back table back there, so you're welcome to take one of those home. Okay, so today, <clears throat> start out with, uh, I asked, what we needed, what we needed. <clears throat> and a message came through. I thought, well, I want to do that. <laughs> so I said, Phil, what should I talk about this week? He said the same thing. I don't want to talk about that. <clears throat> so I thought, okay, okay, I'll just be with it and I'll, we'll talk about that. <clears throat> and then I thought, you know, this is really complicated. And I said, went back to the Lord and said, can we do something else? Because this is like really challenging. And, uh, <clears throat> So <laughs> I was given something else. It was really lovely. Usually, usually I don't get something else. It's like, no, you can do it. But this time they relented. And I think it was because we're going to talk about hope. And I said, it would be really nice if I had planned ahead of time and we could have hope floats after church. And, but we're not prepared for that. So I think that's, that's probably why we relented. So somewhere down the road we're going to have root beer floats uh, and we'll be talking about hope. I think hope is a part of what we're going to be talking about today, <coughs> uh, but we'll see. So you have your calendar. Those of you who are on YouTube, there's an article on the back, and you can go to our website, thedivinefellowship.com, and you can get this article. And the article is The Blessing of Connection. And I want to bring it to your attention today because it was just, not only was it a really cool experience that I had and then was able to write about it, um, but this, this tapping process that I did 
was huge, was tremendous. And I want us to do this today, but I also want to do it in, in, in light of other things that we're going to talk about. So first of all, let me just chat with you briefly about connection. Uh, our connection to spirit is always there. Remember in our song, that thread of connection? It's always there, but sometimes we don't feel it. Sometimes we feel everything but connected. Uh, and we feel discouraged and lost and all of that sort of thing. And so what do we do to get that connection back or get that awareness of that connection back? Because we do, it comes and goes, does it not? Does it not? Am I the only one? <laughs> I don't think I am the only one that it comes and goes. <clears throat> so we can become willing and it's not enough. So there's other things that are necessary for us to do that will bring us into alignment to where we can sense or have direct access to that connection. <clears throat> because being connected grants us magic. It really is. It's just the things that the circumstances, the coincidences that happen, it's just phenomenal. But we can't get there if we're stuck or we're not in that state of connectedness. <clears throat> this last week we had a, excuse me, <clears throat> followers of the way class. And in that followers of the way, we looked at the 23rd Psalm. And we revised it so that it, was, it would fit for us. Because the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. We don't see the shepherds very often. So, you know, that doesn't... For, for people back in Bible times, that was a common occurrence. They understood the concept of having a shepherd. So I had done this same thing before. Um, and in, in the first time I did this, I think that was like uh, 2017, uh, I rewrote it to say, the Lord is my pack leader. <laughs> and, and it was really fun. Let me read it to you. It's really a hoot. <clears throat> Lord is my pack leader. I have everything I need. I rest easy in the luxurious richness of his loving care. We enjoy quiet moments together. He brings my spiritual innocence back to me and shows me the sacred path of love and light because he is love and light. When the time comes for me to face death, whether by old age, illness, accident, or even the cruelty of one who doesn't know the path of light, he breaks the grip of fear on my heart because he's right here. I live safety under his protection, and that feels really good. It doesn't matter what others think of me because he sustains me, not them. He gives me self-authority. I get to choose trust, choose to trust my own ring true instead of being swayed by the opinions of other, others. When we walk together, we manifest abundance. For sure, dude. It's all good. You know, <laughs> surely, goodness, and surely. That's for sure, dude. It's all good. I can trust his loving kindness every day of my life for the rest of my life. Where he goes, I go. I'm at home in his loving care today and always. In the class <clears throat> a couple of days ago, he became my master teacher. It was really cool. One person had him as the dance instructor, and one person had him as an art teacher, and one person had him as a coach, team coach. Um, <clears throat> so there's lots of different things that you can do. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But here's this, the Lord is my shepherd translated. So I'm going to read you the Bible verse and then what it says underneath that is my, is my translation. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I change that to the Lord is my master teacher, I live in abundance. He makes, me down, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me into great halls of learning and wisdom. He shows me the way. He leads me beside still waters. I drink from the fountain of peace. He restores my soul. He renews my enthusiasm for learning and for teaching. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He walks with me on a sacred path. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I don't understand or I lose sight of the goal, I fear no evil for thou art with me. I am unafraid because he's right here. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. His words and his teachings bless me. 
Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He brings me refreshing new insights, even in the presence of those that don't want to learn. He has anointed my head with oil. He touches my mind with awareness and grace. Love that one. My cup overflows. He blesses me with more than I could ever understand or know. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. With certainty, I know that wisdom, or cool dude, uh, I know that wisdom and abundant love flow towards me always, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He makes his home in my heart. My heart is his home. Isn't that fun? Now I can feel, at first, some resistance about that. Because, oh, no, I can't change it. I can't change God's word. No, that doesn't work for me. We already are. Here's the Lord's Prayer that we normally have in our mind. Not what's in our heart, but normally have in our mind. The Lord is my taskmaster. Isn't that how we feel sometimes? I'm afraid to ask for anything. I'm so stressed I can't sleep. I don't know where he's taking me, but it doesn't look good. My soul shrivels under the stress of trying to be perfect. He expects me to do it right every time. I'm afraid of people, politics, the world, my neighbor, my health. Nothing brings me comfort for all of that. He dumps guilt on my head. I'm drained. I'm going to be dogged by regret and shame my whole life. I feel I'll be abandoned, disconnected, and alone forever. Isn't that how we really feel? We've already rewritten it. We've just rewritten it into a really negative, non-supportive thing. Don't we? And why do we do that? Because the mind thinks it knows everything. And the mind thinks, I should be in control of my whole life and I should be able to make it work. And the truth is, that's not the truth. <laughs> truth is, life happens. And life happens without our expecting it. And sometimes it's for our, uh, for our pleasure, and sometimes it's not pleasant at all. And it's not that it's negative, it's just difficult. Because sometimes what's on the other side of a difficult situation is the best thing ever. How many people here have experienced their best worst thing ever? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then when we have another bad thing, we go, oh, it's the worst thing ever. And we forget about the best part. But if we can hang on to the fact that the worst thing often leads to the best thing ever, but we forget. I forget. <coughs> and all I can think about is I'm suffering, and it feels terrible, and I don't like it. So let's look at this 23rd Psalm again, because here's the thing. We want our souls restored. But who wants to have their souls restored to an, a taskmaster? Nobody. So stop faulting yourself. Stop feeling guilty because you can't connect. Let go of that as best you can for now. If you want to hang on to a little bit, that's okay. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow you'll let go of some more. Because the truth is, there's this loving being that wants to support and nourish and protect you. The rod and my staff, they comfort me. That's not to whack you around. No, that's to keep back the things that would take you away from his presence. But we think it's about being perfect and, and that we'll never measure up. And it's never been our, our goal. That's not... That's not the point. This is about allowing divine source to bless you in a way that blesses you. Now, we don't get shepherd. We don't understand that. Now, back in the old days, they did. They knew that a shepherd was this loving being who watched out for these little creatures, that they needed him, and he was there for them all the time. We've lost track of that. So if you were to rewrite the 23rd Psalm, what would you say? Would he be your master teacher, a pack leader, art instructor, or master artist, music director? Oh, that had beautiful nuances with it about the vibration of love flowing through me. It was beautiful. Orchestra conductor, tour guide, 
head librarian, lead coach, life coach, playwright, see, writing the play, your life, songwriter, <coughs> chief of medicine, the head doctor, medicine man, captain of the ship, or admiral of the fleet, landscape artist, master chef, master jeweler, lead technician, lead engineer, what else? What else could he be? Phil! How about electrical mechanical uh, teacher? <laughs> oh, for you, yes, that would be perfect. <laughs> what else might be good? Yes? Healing master. Healing master. Love it. Gardener. Gardener. Yes, gardener would be. And, and they, so they would know exactly what plant needs to go where. I was working in the garden the other day, Mr. Phil, and uh, there's one side of the house that is totally shaded by really tall arborvitae. <gasps> Well, when they were little tiny things, my mother planted roses. And now those things are really tall. The roses don't get any light. Or they, they get light, but they don't get any sun, direct sun. Roses love sun. So these roses are all sprangly, and like there's this big, long stem and a teeny, tiny rose out here at the end. So they're not thriving. They're not thriving. A master gardener would dig those up and plant them where they could get in the sun. I'll have to hire me one <laughs> because I trimmed them all back again because <laughs> that's what we do. You know, you've heard the phrase, bloom where you're planted. If you're not blooming, if you're not flourishing, ask to be transplanted by the master gardener. <laughs> and then stand back, fasten your seatbelt, and here comes some change because change is going to happen. And sometimes to get out of the shadow, we've got to uproot and dig ourselves out of whatever situation we're in and allow ourselves to be transplanted into something better. Am I boring you yet? Sorry. Just a quick look at the 23rd Psalm one more time in another way because I'm going to give you a chance to rewrite the 23rd Psalm for yourself. The Lord is my shepherd. Now that's talking about a relationship. And it's a relationship of someone who's got it all with someone who needs. You don't have to have your answers. The master gardener, the master chef, the master tech electrical technician has the answers. You show up and allow yourself to be led. Show up and allow the answers to come. I shall not want. Supply. The supply is there. Access it. You have the right to that. That's your natural state of being, is being in that flow. We're going to talk more about the flow here in a minute. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I want to talk about the, He makes me lie down in green pastures. That sounds like, lie down. No. He makes it possible for me to lie down. Makes it possible for me to lie down. We're not forced. This is all about choice. If you have a spiritual directive in your world and you feel like it has to be a certain way, you might want to look at that again. Because the first gift God gave humanity was choice. You're going to choose to eat the apple or you're going to choose not. Choice. It's all about choice. If you feel your choice has been taken from you, look at that. Look at that. Now, sometimes our life circumstances, there's only really only one next step. But you can still choose whether to take it or not. Choice is there. And that's rest. Laying down in greased pastures is rest. He leads me beside the still waters. He brings refreshment. He brings refreshment to us. I'll get that in a minute. Getting sidetracked. He restores my soul. Isn't that what we're looking for? Yes. And that reconnection? We don't do that reconnection restoring. It's gifted to us. We suit up, show up, and allow, and it happens. If we can get out of our own way, that's the key, is getting out of our own way. I'm speaking to myself on this one. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Righteousness, right wiseness. We'll know the next right thing to do. We don't have to have a whole answer. We don't have to have the whole thing planned out. But the next right answer will be, will be revealed to us. It will be shown to us. Be gifted to us. That's guidance. For his namesake. That's purpose. 
There's a purpose. You're here for a purpose. I'm here for a purpose. And it's not to be unhappy. It's not to be miserable. Now that's not to say that life isn't full of suffering. We've all suffered. We all are suffering. There's, all, there's not one of us that has everything perfectly lined up and we're just peachy. There's always something going on. Because that's life. We're not spiritual beings living in the ethereal realms. We're human beings living in a physical form and a physical body in the here and now. And that's just a part of life. That's just a part of life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Okay, so life has challenges. Life has challenges, and sometimes it feels like we're in a dark place. I will feel no, feel, I will fear no evil. You say that fast three times. I'm trying to talk really fast because i got stuff to do. I will fear no evil. That's feeling safe. Don't you want to feel safe? Yes. Safe in your own heart, safe in your own world, safe in your own life? For thou art with me, or you are with me. That's loyalty. He's not going to leave you. Even when we do stupid stuff. He's not going to leave us. That divine source, that divine connection, whatever you call that, cannot, will not leave us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's protection. Again, not for whacking us, but for whacking anything trying to take us from that presence. So if we don't feel connected, he's wielding the whackables on the things that are trying to distract us. We got that fight happening in our behalf. We don't have to do the fighting. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's hope. Here's our hope. No matter what's going on, we're going to feast. No matter who doesn't like you, we're going to feast. No matter who challenges me, I'm going to feast. Because he's setting it up for me. You anoint my head with oil. That's a consecration. It's a blessing. And that's self-authority. Again, you have the right to choose. You have the right to be the master of your own destiny. Take charge of your world when you're in, in charge of being guided by the master. Right? My cup runs over. That's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessing. And I dwell in the house of the Lord. That's security. That's security. Wherever you are, there, that's where you are. For, forever. That's not just now. That's just not if someday I'm good enough. It's now and forever throughout eternity. So I have a handout for you. <clears throat> And this is the Lord's Psalm, Lord's Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Um, and I've given you space to rewrite, to write your own version underneath that. Take some time, we're not going to do it right now because I have something else I want you to, you want to pass those out for me? If you would be so kind. Take one, pass it around or pass it on. <clears throat> because this is for you. This is this is our time to feel connected. It's really hard to function when we're disconnected. Ask me how I know that. How do you know that? <laughs> because this last week, <laughs> this last week I felt disconnected. I knew I wasn't disconnected, but I felt disconnected. And in the article that I wrote that's on our calendar, if you didn't get a church calendar yet, they're in the back. We'll make sure you get one. Um, I talk about that process. And part of that process I want to do with you today uh, as a tapping process to connect us, help us reconnect, help us be aware of the connection that's available. Okay? So how many people, do you all know about EFT tapping? Yes. Okay, anybody not know about EFT tapping? Okay, so EFT tapping, emotional freedom techniques, is... Uh, go online, there's a ton of information about it, but there was this man, I can't remember his name, you can look it up, Google that. Um, he, had, he was a counselor, and he had this woman who was deathly afraid of water, swimming, or any kind of water like that. 
Would you make sure the people in the back have a calendar, Phil? I think there's somebody looking back. Whatever. Um, <laughs> that too. Yes, Phil. Make a sentence. Uh, make a sentence out of that. <clears throat> anyway, he couldn't couldn't break her free from traditional stuff. So he he thought, well, what the heck? I've tried everything else. Uh, on the body are termination points for all the meridians in the body. And so he had her tap on the meridian ending points as, he ta as they talk through her fear of the water. Uh, and they were at the swimming pool, and she was like, terrified. And so when she finished this round of tapping, she walked over to the side of the pool, sat down with her feet in the water. Got out, they tapped again. She got in the water. So this stuff goes to our system and really, really helps, really helps. So as I said, I, wasn't, I was feeling disconnected, <coughs> out of sorts. Um, so I did this tapping protocol. And I used the rivers of life, the, the five rivers of light that we were talking about before. And I'll go over those in a mis minute. <clears throat> and as I was doing that, I re recalled this Bible verse. And this is from John chapter 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So this living water uh, is available to us. John chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, and he's talking to the Samaritan woman. Remember, the Jews didn't talk to Samaritans because Samaritans were less than to Jews. Jesus didn't care. He was going to talk to her anyway. And he said to her, If you knew the gift of God who is with you, says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. <coughs> so again, this living life force energy is available to us. One last verse. And this is from Isaiah 58.11. And the Lord will continually guide you. Don't you love that? Continually. Not when you're anguished and it's the only thing left. Continually, every step is being guided. And satisfy your desire in scorched places. Did I tell you this is 5811 of Isaiah? If I didn't, there it is again. And give you strength to your bones. Sometimes we just don't have the strength to keep going. And you will be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. That's what we're talking about. We want to renew that flow. That flow is there, but we may not feel as connected as we had, would like. And uh, as I spoke about before, a few weeks ago, we had the five, we stepped into five waterfalls. Uh, the first one was peace. And we discovered that peace isn't just, oh, um, but peace is this active, energized, open curiosity where we feel vibrantly alive without having any requirements on action or duty, responsibility. That's peace. Does that make sense? Peace. You probably have more peace in your life than you recognize because you think peace has to be oblivion. It doesn't. Peace is active. Peace is that centeredness that we get when we stop efforting about stuff, right? But don't we just love to effort? Oh, I've got to figure this out. I've got to worry about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> worry is a prayer in reverse. <laughs> Doesn't work. So that was peace. The next one was vitality. And we, I thought, you know, God, shouldn't vitality be first? Actually, shouldn't courage is the next one. Shouldn't courage be first? No. Peace was first. Because you can't go anywhere without peace. And then vitality comes when we stop efforting about stuff, stop anguishing about stuff. There's all these stores of energy that then open up. Who knew? Who knew? As someone who fights a, an illness that often brings fatigue, this is good news for me. <laughs> it helps me let go of efforting, and then I have more energy to do the things that I would love to do. Then comes courage. And when we have courage, 
then we can take the next step. We know we're going to, we, we have this energized feeling, and then the energy will have a directive, which leads us to the expansive awareness. And expansive awareness is where we then perceive that divine connection. We perceive the guidance that's already there. And the result of that is compassion. Compassion for ourselves, compassion for others, compassion for situations. And often those things all are happening at the same time. Peace, vitality, courage, expansive awareness, and compassion. So I want us to step into that energy. And I'll walk you through the tapping process, okay? So the first thing we do, you can, you can talk with me. You can repeat after me if you'd like. I have no idea what I'm going to say, so it's, I, I don't know. Or you can just listen in your head. But you start with <coughs> the heel of your hand. Okay, I'm stepping into the energy of this living waters. Stepping into this energy of the living waters. All right, now we're going to start above the eyebrow, and we're going to start with peace. We're going to do the whole round with peace. Peace attends me. Peace finds me. I am at peace. I welcome peace. I know peace. I feel peaceful under the arm. Peace is generated within me. I am peace. How does that feel so far? Does that feel a little bit better? Yes. yes. All right. Now we're going to work on <clears throat> vitality. So over the eyebrow, vitality. Energy, new energy comes to me. Energy is refreshed. I let go of efforting. I let go of anguishing. I let go of struggle. I let go of having to fix it and make it right. I let go of stress. I am vitalized. Okay. How did that one feel? Somebody's laughing. Courage. I step into courage. Courage flows to me now. I have the energy and the peace to move forward. I have courage within my heart, I have courage in my soul. I feel courageous. Courage blesses me. I am courage. How's that feeling? Pretty darn good, right? Now we step into uh, expansive awareness. Over the eyebrow. <coughs> My awareness expands. I don't have to know the answer. Any answer I need will come to me. I'm being blessed with new insights. My awareness expands into those new insights. I'm feeling insightful. I wake up. I am expanded awareness. Take a deep breath on that one. Compassion. The reason I use the word compassion and not love is because we have cluttered the word love with extra meanings that for us for now are not necessary. This compassion is this genuine, kind, alert, generosity aimed at ourselves and others. Okay, ready to take that on? <coughs> compassion. I step into compassion. I can let go of fear and love myself. Loving myself is easy. Loving others is becoming easy. Loving my circumstances, I'm learning. 
I'm stepping further into compassion for myself. I'm stepping further into compassion for others. I am compassion. <coughs> Take a deep breath in <coughs> and exhale and allow that to fit. So now we have this revitalized energy of compassion, expanded awareness, courage, vitality, and peace. And when you're in that state of being, you have this connectedness. Your soul is being restored every moment, every day, all the time, getting better and better. Let's take, oh shoot, out of time. Mr. Phil, join me up front, please. Would you join me up front, please? Front and center. Thank you, sir. Oh, they're heavy taken. Thank you. Okay, so communion is is a physical manifestation of our spiritual connectedness. Just as we have walked through this process, so we're allowing spirit to nourish us, nourish our soul, this is symbolically doing the same thing. This is symbolically activating that awareness for our, our being on a physical level. Uh, the little crackery things are unleavened bread, um, animal crackers if you want to honor Native American pathway, and in the cup is gluten-free. Whatever works for you works for us. Join us in prayer, if you would, please. Loving Spirit of Light, thank you for the connection that we have with you. Thank you for walking with us. Help us to recognize we're not alone in this life. Bless our journey. Walk with us in all things. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. that continues around. Would you join us in prayer again, please? Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it, and help us to know that with that life, we have your presence to guide us, direct us, comfort us, and encourage us. Help us to notice that. Help us to connect in with that. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Any volunteers? I got one. Oh, okay. Got sure. two. <clears throat> oh, I'm praying. Okay. No, you're saying whatever you want to say. Oh, I thought I was just helping with baskets, but okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. If you're uncomfortable doing that. Yeah, no, I was like, I'll help with the okay. <laughs> we had a volunteer that didn't even know what we she was volunteering <laughs> for. We have another volunteer. Oh, okay. So now there you go. <coughs> we got this. See, it works. Too. It works. This place is my jam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know of a lot of places where you can feel comfortable, where you can just do your thing, and no one's like, yikes. 
So, <laughs> gave what she can, really, and then some, because these people deserve it. Um, and, yeah, go on with your bad self. <laughs> I was having a really rough last week, oh, and I really wanted to be here with all of you today, because I needed some cleansing and feeling connected, and I feel very connected with all of you. So, whatever you can give, awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for showing up. You know, sometimes when people are in a bad place, they don't show up. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> this is where you come when you don't feel good. If you're feeling really good, go to the park. You don't need this place, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Take a deep breath in and exhale. Take another deep breath in and exhale. One more deep breath in and exhale. And allow your awareness to go to your heart space. This is a place within your body that is significant for you energetically. It's halfway between your breastbone and your spine. It's the safest, most protected part of your body. It is in this safe space of your heart space that we do spiritual work. So with your awareness in your heart space, have a sense of allowing that safety, that courage, all of those energies that we talked about earlier, have a sense of them. And now bring your attention to the bottoms of your feet. There are energy portals at the bottoms of your feet, and if you open them with your intent, they'll open like the eye of a camera. And as they open, any energy that is not love and light, joy, prosperity, uh, compassion, kindness, Anything that is within your body that is not resonant with that falls away. Let it go as best you can. Let it go. And as that continues to drain or clear, it's just going into the earth. It's just energy. It may feel <coughs> like pain to you or discomfort to you or betrayal to you or or any of those other things that are unpleasant that may feel like that to you, but it's just energy. So you're not hurting the earth by releasing, so just let it go. And as that dissipates, bring your attention now to the top of your head. Remember the soft spot on the baby's head? That's the place where I'm, I want us to bring our attention now. And as you bring your attention there, that's that connectedness spot. It is from there that we connect to divine source. It's always connected. But with your attention, you can amplify that connection. And that will open even bigger than it already is. And with your awareness, you can reach up. And there are many portals over the top of your head. And you will intuitively know which one is right for you today. Maybe it's the golden portal or a blue portal, or a green portal, or a red portal. Maybe it vibrates with the color of copper. Whatever you are sensing, trust it, and know that that's the energy that is right for you to receive today. And as you tap into that, then that energy now flows down into the top of your head and begins to fill your mind. This is the living light of love. And it will push out any other fears and worries and doubts. And they'll just fall out the bottoms of your feet. Letting more and more of this living light of love touch your discernment centers, which are above your eyebrows. We tapped on one side of them today. Let this light touch your discernment centers. <clears throat> and then your eyes and your third eye, so you can perceive 
life in a new perspective. Let more and more of that living light of love flow into your body and let it touch your ears, your throat, your mouth. This is, this is where you vibrate or resonate with truth. And sometimes our truth is filtered by past sorrow and past pain. Let this living light of love come in and wash that away and bring the divine truth of who you really are into your awareness more clearly. So that you can speak your truth. And if someone cannot hear your truth, it's okay. You don't have to change their mind or fix them. You just keep resonating at your truth. The truth of who you really are. Not the story you tell yourself, but the truth of who you really are. <coughs> Letting more and more love and light flow into your neck and into your shoulders. We carry a lot of tension there. You might want to roll your shoulders to release that. Feels good. Letting more and more love and light flow down your arms and into your hands. Your hands may pulsate or get warm or feel as if you're expanding. This is healing energy being ready for you to use for worthy work. Letting more and more love and light fill your torso, touching every organ, every system, every tissue, every fiber, every cell, down into the cells, down into the DNA. Revitalizing, recharging, restoring, reconnecting. Letting more and more love and light flow into your legs, down into your feet. And because those portals are still open, you can allow this living light of love to shine through you deep into the earth. And the resonance of this is such that if anyone is needing a little encouragement, a little love, a little compassion. They'll sense this and they can draw upon it. Feels good to be a conduit of love. Now gently, gently, gently close the bottoms of your feet and you're now a vessel of light. More light filling your body and more light filling the energy field around your body. So you are in light, of light. You are light. <coughs> and allow yourself to take a little walk in your imagination. Create for yourself a little pathway. And along this pathway, there may be flowers. Perhaps your pathway is a dirt pathway. Perhaps it's cobblestone. Perhaps it's paved. Whatever you're experiencing is what is right for you. And as you're walking along this pathway, you see that you come to an expansive space ahead of you. Perhaps it's an open meadow. Perhaps it's a, an open parking lot. Perhaps it's an open uh, field where there was wheat or something. <coughs> And allow yourself to walk through that open expanse. Your trail goes right through it. Allow yourself to move through that open expanse. <coughs> and the trail leads you down to the ocean. There's a beach. And as you're walking along the beach, walk to where you're, you are half in the water and half out so that the sand is moist. It feels good. And the water will lap up against your feet, your ankles, and then wash away, pull back. And just stand there at that, that edge of the ocean, right in the surf for just a moment. As the water washes up over you, it collects any sorrow or burdens <coughs> and takes them out to sea. <coughs> and you can release them. Let that water wash up. And then pull that away from you, effortlessly clearing, effortlessly healing, effortlessly blessing you. And take notice now, bring your attention down to your feet, 
and you notice there's something in the sand for you. Is it a silver dollar? Is it a gold coin? Is it some sea glass? Whatever you see or notice is a symbolic object that is representative of divine source and their gift for you today. You're being gifted with something that will help you on your journey right now. Just pick that up and receive that with gratitude. Allow that gratitude to flow in your body. And as a result of that gratitude, there's something that you'd like to leave here as a token of your appreciation. So whether it's a word or a thought or a feeling or some other symbolic object, whatever comes to your awareness, that's what's right for you. Leave that here, leave that now, and allow that to bless you as a token of your appreciation. One last step into the water, allowing the water to wash up over your ankles, wash away. Noticing the sky, where the sky and the water meet. And now with a full heart and a deep connection, allow yourself to turn and walk back off the beach, back through the open expanse, back to your pathway, and from the pathway back into the here and now. Take a deep breath in, and exhale. I want to stretch a bit, wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. That was a very short, quick trip. Does anyone have a quick question or comment about their guided meditation? I'll only take a couple because we're out of time. So my talk to me later. My portal was iridescent, and cool. it had like a silver, a liquid silver running through it. Cool. And then I... Silver is reflective. That iridescent is reflective. So this is giving you an opportunity to do some reflection. Mm. I found a little tiny gold nugget. Ah, so you get to reflect on your own worth. Oh, <laughs> and I left, I, I'm growing some spearmint, and I left a spearmint leaf, a big one. So. Okay. So this is, spearmint is refreshing. Um, being around you is really refreshing. You're just like a breath of fresh air, girl. Aww. So, so you, you're leaving your willingness to share who you are. Thank you. That's and beautiful. then something really weird happened when uh, you said, look at the sky. Uh -huh. All of a sudden... There was these rolling clouds, and they just kind of lifted me up and took me away. <laughs> Take me away. <laughs> so that was cool. interesting. So this guided meditation was very uplifting for your soul. So you might want to do that again. So there may be um, connection with spirit that is really wanting to uplift you. So if you've been a little down about something, this is, this is really going to buoy you up. Thank so, you. You're welcome. Any other? Want to pass it across the aisle there? I'll try to make it as quick as possible. <laughs> do um, what you gotta do, girl. So when we first started in the body, um, I had like an ethereal um, fog that was covering, but it wasn't like I was clouded. Mm -hmm. um, it completely covered my body and consumed it. And then I felt a So you were wrapped mm -hmm. in this energy. Yes. And then when you mentioned the portals, um, out of my body, I actually was inside my body the whole time when you said to go to our heart space. My, I was physically in my own body and in my heart. And then um, my body was using a, a, a hammer and nails to nail my space together. And then out of that space came a brown eagle. Ooh. It came literally out of my head. And then as it went to the portal, it turned into a gold eagle. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> and then so let's take it a piece at a okay. time so you're 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 rebuilding who you are the hammer and nails you have the tools and you have the time and you know what you need to do and you're doing that you're rebuilding who you are right now is that not true yeah 
Go ahead. And then the, the eagles. This eagle represents great spirit. Now, Dan probably can get uh, his hand is already up. So <laughs> Dan can probably give you more insight on the different kinds of eagles. Yes, sir. It's even more than just great spirit. In the building that she's doing, those are tools to rebuild her life. And the eagle is already showing her a pathway to create her. Ah. Um, it actually that? followed me throughout the whole entire dream. Awesome. Um, and then as we went along the stone, I had a, a singular stone, so I was kind of balancing my way to where I was going. And instead of a path, um, a continuing path, um, it was a great lake, but everything around it was dark, but all I saw was the lake and a paddleboard. And so instead of walking my way to the beach, I paddled my way to the ocean. I cool. stepped on the shore, and then the eagle was still there. And as a gift, the eagle left and then um, I got um, a small little wooden um, piece of like um, wood that driftwood. Driftwood. I got driftwood. Okay. So the, the gift that you've been given, this driftwood, is letting you know that you may feel a drift, but driftwood becomes changed and becomes beautiful. So you're allowing that process. And the paddleboard kind of assists with this because you are above it all. You're above all the deep trauma. You can stay on the surface of that and not get dragged under. So you're above that. And you can just paddle your way to where you need to be. Uh, the last part when you said the water washed over us, I actually did a full dunk into the water and I breathed in the water. And then I came up and I breathed again. Awesome. So you're breathing in this living water that we've been talking about today. So this, that spiritual renewal, you're allowing yourself to be renewed, which is why you're here. Um, and then, to, then you can breathe again. Then you can breathe freely. Your life will, will uh, expand and give you a little more peace. Anything else? Okay, if you need any other, if you have any other comments or questions, you can chat with me after.